Evening boys and girls, welcome to today. And I've got my my refills. So I shall just organise the fridge. Hold on one second. Oh, something healthy look. Um, oh dear, I have so many. Right, let's clear the top shelf out. Bloody rude not to. Right, there. right, I'm going to remember not to leave my mobile phone next to the audio. I've left it a little fuzzy, so you should be able to see it. Um, because in the previous upload, oh, it's bloody chair. Right, in the previous upload, I. Uh, <laughs> There was a dee 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 kind of buzzing in the background because I'd left my phone there, which was really dumb. I know better than that. Whatever. But anyway, I thought I'll finish this off because it would be rude not to. Bung that down there. Out of the way. Out of the way. Now, why am I wearing this stupid hat? Bit of a reveal for you. Bert became a barber. Yes. And ta -da! <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was the end of my hair. <laughs> but it, it was starting to get really stupid. I'd wake up, and I know I always kept it keep it flat style thing. But I'd wake up, and it'd be stuck out to about there. And I was just start, I was just thinking, no, I'm, I'm turning to Marge Simpson now. So. Yeah, I thought I'd, I'd get Bert to give me supposedly a number five, although I think this is more like a number three, but I have got male pattern baldness, so at the end of the day it looks a lot thinner than it would normally do. <laughs> oh, weather has picked up lovely. Now, what happened to everything else I recorded last week? And that's a very good question, and it deserves a very good answer. These little things micro SD cards um, just to save me from you know shaking close to the camera I'll take a photo of it for you so as you can actually see what the bloody hell I'm going on about come on you're better than that take a photo lovely jumpy. right micro SD cards they're wonderful things brilliant things you get to record all of this kind of crap with them the problem is that the equipment you use have to be able to take whatever size or style these are. Now, micro SD cards and what SC and stuff like that, they're, they're 10 a penny, they go in virtually everything. I mean, that's got a four gig thing in there, but that's just audio, so who cares? That'll go on for, I think it's two hours, four minutes a file on that thing, and it just goes on and on and on. And that the SJ uh, cams that I use, the one that you are looking at me through, that's a 32 gig capable camera that as you saw is a 64 gig now the one problem with that and i discovered it when i was driving but i thought i'd be fine is that the 32 gigs hold about i think it's four and a half hours worth of um recording the 64s can hold like 10 hours the problem is that camera isn't capable of writing to them. Now, when I got the 64s, I didn't know this, and I was still using them when I was driving way back in the day when I was working for the wholesaler. And <laughs> if you didn't know and you're planning on doing something like this and you've got an SJ4000, which is the camera I'm using, what used to happen was it would record for about four hours, about the 32 gig mark and then just go blank but that would show that it was still recording so you didn't know there was no bleep there was no cut there was there was nothing it, it's just you're watching the footage back and black screen oh that's useful problem is that where it used to do stuff like that where it recorded for about four hours it, it it's not consistent Ooh, hello. it's not consistent if that makes sense it's uh, sometimes it'll record for four hours sometimes it'll record for an hour sometimes it'll record for two hours sometimes it won't record at all it's a bit of a p 
again in the rear end. Now I did think that was what was wrong with the Movie K2s I used to use because the screens went fuzzy. It turns out Movie K2s, although they are fantastic audio quality cameras, I have to give them their due because all my early stuff, although I didn't edit the audio the way I edit it now, so it was just flat audio. All the audio I used to have way back in the day was the Movie K2. Problem is that as they age, they're not well put together inside. So things come apart, solders fail, whatever. And it, it, it just, it, well, it totals itself. I mean, I'm sure I've, in previous uploads before, I've edited in footage where one has gone wrong and it's just loads of, well, white noise on the screen style thing. You know, that hazy, fuzzy, whatever you want to call it. So, I thought it was to do with these, but I kept changing them about putting new ones in. It, it was the camera, uh, which was kind of annoying because the K2 is actually a very good camera, but it's just not well built. It's really annoying because I wanted the movie K2 to be good because it's British made. But unfortunately, I have to admit, it's like a Rover. It's not well made. Um, <laughs> that's going to get me some abuse. <laughs> Rovers? Depends on what rover you're talking about, Bill. Yes, older rovers, very good. Rovers where they were in um, joint development with Honda, not bad. Um, but a lot of rovers, especially the last ones, not that great. Uh, anybody who's ever had a Rover K series engine will tell you. They like, they like to um, blow their heads, shall we say. I was trying to think of a better analogy, but I just couldn't, can't be asked. Um, but yes, um, so the previous uploads after the J thing, which is why it cut out like it did, because it's like I was going on to say something else, if you remember, because I was like, yeah, cheers for watching, blah, 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 blah. And I was going on and, it, and I, I cut it out because it literally, at that point, it was perfect. At that point, it went blank. Muggins here didn't know, and I turned it off, you know, went to record the next segment and so on and so forth everything else and I spent two hours in here right two hours blank absolutely blank all the audio none of the footage I thought oh <laughs> well that's useful now obviously I'm hoping at this precise point in time that the camera isn't broken and it was because of the SD card and this is the card that came out of the camera uh, obviously, if you're watching this, it means that the camera wasn't broken and I'm not wasting my bloody time. <laughs> It'd be pointless saying if you're not watching this because, well, duh. Um, but yeah, it was everything was just blank. I was like, ah, because I had a week's worth. I, I'd done, well, I'd done five in, in total. After, if you took away the Trucker J one that I'd, uh, he put me up to, I'd done five others. So, you know, I could have done five days. And the thing is, uh, what I was discussing in the last one is I have furloughed myself. Um, obviously, as you can see from my rotund physique, I need to sort things out. And I don't know whether you can tell, I've been tidying up a little bit. <laughs> and the reason I've done that is to get that bastard thing out. And that is a right bastard. Um because I need to start using that and it's one of the major reasons that I furloughed myself. There you go, Trucker Andy, I'm using it. Now, <laughs> it's, it's one of the reasons that I furloughed myself uh, to work on my squidginess. Because in the ones that didn't upload, and I'm trying to remember everything, because obviously I've got the audio and I've kind of jogged my memory earlier today. But in the stuff that didn't upload, I was talking about the fact I'd furloughed myself because at the start of this COVID stuff, uh, at the start of the lockdown, I was making a criminal amount of money. Okay, I, seriously, I've never in my life been paid the amount I was being paid in a, in a single week. In one week, okay, in one of the weeks, I took 1,350 quid. I was like, ooh. Um, <laughs> And I built up a little bit of money. I've obviously started doing the investing. If you are curious, I shall use this one. 
my current level of investment is from the previous ones I was uploading I shall upload this one 3702 quid uh, running a bit down today because things haven't gone the way I was expecting them to go uh, so unfortunately I am running at a 91 pound loss at the moment but this is investing this isn't CFD so I'm just holding this is like a long term it'll go down it'll go up it'll go down it'll go, so on and so forth so I'm not too bothered about that um, I was at 3,800 a little while ago uh, but something went green I needed a little bit of money so I took it and, and what have you um, but yeah I, I'm running at that at the moment so I've got my little investment stuff going I've got money that I've put to one side and now I furloughed myself because obviously I'm not earning money you know I'm not going to work if I'm going to furlough myself I'm not going to work I haven't backdated the furlough it is from where I, I, I left work because as you guys know my accountant thinks I'm nuts he thinks I am insane but I don't like that kind of concept of robbing the tax man you know yes okay I claim for th certain things and you know the, the, I personally believe that there are things we could do to the tax system changes that we could make that would make it better that's for a later upload uh, way too in depth for them, what I want to do today um, but at the end of the day if I earn that amount of money I pay the correct amount of tax you know I don't sole trader Bert and give her a wage and do something funny with myself and give myself a wage and then take a dividend here and then do this, that and all the all the wacky stuff everybody else does. Like no 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 no. If you earn that money you pay the tax on it because you want a health service. You want the services the tax provides. You want a police force, a fire service, you want the NHS, you want all that, you gotta pay for it. It's not free. Alright? And so when I furloughed myself, um, my my accountant was like, well, I can backdate it for you. I was like, well, I didn't think I was allowed to do that. Well, well every other director's doing it. I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to take this money and then at the end of all of this have one of those, um, what do you call it, audits. And then they go, well, hold on a minute. You were claiming this and taking that, right? You owe us. I, I don't want that. That's just why risk it. What What is the point? You know, if you can survive happily, and let's be honest, a beer of fridge, uh, a beer of fridge, <laughs> a fridge of beer. <laughs> I'll get my words out one day. Uh, a fridge of beer, and all my cars pretty much sorted. I've got, ooh, yeah. Uh, I've let this go on Twitter and Facebook, so some of you already know this, but I had a quote for the final work that needs doing to that Jag. And I've already posted it, so I'm not hiding anything. But the final work for that Jag, so all the tidying up bits and bobs in the engine, you know, uh, an exhaust leak, uh, frayed wire, some bits and bobs, rocker cover gasket, stuff like that, and the welding, yeah, is going to be just under 1,600 quid. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a part of me going look just, just just do it yourself make content doing it yourself but that destroys the entire point of what I'm doing with the Jag right it just destroys it so I've, I've got enough I can talk something out with my trades and I, I've got enough to cover it's not going to be the end of the world uh, but no I paid the i30 off this is things that I'll talk about I paid the i30 off I cleared a debt, I've got some money saved, all this kind of stuff, and I thought, well, what else can I do? Obviously, I've had a, a tidy up to get this heap out, as I've said. So I thought, well, looking at myself and my, you know, my masculine physique of boobs, um, <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. I thought what I'd do is I'd work on myself. I, I'd work on just starting to get fit losing weight is something that takes time it's not something you can do overnight yes I've got to change my diet yes I've got to you know change how I you know am active and things like that and I've got the static bike in the living room but that's more uh, if I've had a 15 hour day I don't use it which is really bad I, I, I should I should 
when I stop using it. I haven't forced myself into any kind of routine. I live in the middle of the Essex countryside. Like, literally, find the Essex countryside, put a dart in the dead centre of it, middle of nowhere, that's where I am. And I could easily go walking, and I've been doing that this last week, because obviously I've been furloughed. Um, I've been going for a walk, and when I started doing this walk, the first time I did it was, uh, it's about a four hour, it's four hour, it's about a four mile uh, circuit, roughly. And the first time I did it, I was about one hour, 40 odd minutes. Uh, blisters all over me right foot. <laughs> um, now, I did it today, uh, not long got back from that, and I did it in one hour, 11 minutes, I think it was. I did take a screenshot because I timed myself. I don't pay for one of those apps to follow me about because what the hell's the point, you know? Um, but I did it in, oh, hello, no, I didn't do it in that. I did it, I did it, hold on, where's it gone? Yeah, one hour, 11 minutes, 29 seconds. So, yeah, so I've got quicker at it. I doubt I'm gonna get any quicker because I don't run. I hate running, I loathe it. I actually loathe it with a passion. Um, I just can't, I've tr I tried. I did, I, I valiantly tried when I was younger. And even when I was in agriculture and a, a bull calf got loose or something like that and I had to go chet tear arsing after it. I, I hate running. I really detest it. Um, so I, I, I just, I don't, I don't include that kind of stuff. I, re I, I just don't. Because if you start including in your exercise thing, things that you just don't like to do, you're gonna give up on it quicker and then you're gonna miss that day and then the following day you're gonna be like, well, I'll start again next week, y you know? And so I don't wanna do that. That one, I'm not a fan of, but when I worked for, or when I was working at Sainsbury's, they had an on-site um, gym at Waltham Point. Bloody good gym, actually. And for the time I was working there, and this was going back my first five years of class one driving, for the time I was working there, I was a member of the gym. That's how I stayed. I didn't expand. I stayed about 32, 34 inch waist. I didn't really expand. I got a little bit on the midsection because obviously you sit down a lot more. Um, but I didn't, you know, out because I always used the gym. I'd get back, I'd change in the cab, go use, uh, end my day, go use the gym, go home, and I, I'd do that most days. And they had cross trainers, elliptical trainers, or whatever the hell you want to call these things. And I call them cross trainers. And I tried to use the tread treadmill, because a number of the drivers I knew at the time, who I'd known for years because of where I'd worked, before I became a driver. They were runners. And they always said about, yeah, use a treadmill, it's really good, do it. but I hate running. And so I tried to use a treadmill, I tried to run, and I just hated every second of it. And it was in my set, I used to do 30 minutes, I remember this, I used to do 30 minutes, 10 minutes on the rower, 10 minutes on the treadmill, and 10 minutes on a static bike. And then I'd hit the weights for another 30 minutes. Obviously, I never really bothered too badly, but I, that's what I used to do. A half hour of aerobic and then half hour of weights. And I did that most days. And it kept me all right. I mean, I, I was never building muscle. I've never been one of those protein shakes and all the other I, you know, bollocks to that. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to stay relatively fit, you know? And then one day I was looking at these, or the, the professional versions of these, and I was like, instead of using that bloody treadmill, and I, I hated it, hated it. I like rowing machines. Um, I really like rowing machines, but I don't have anywhere to have a rowing machine. And obviously I like static bikes, it's sitting down exercising, it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> 
So I thought I'd use that. And I preferred using that to the treadmill. So that's why I bought one. And I used it for a while. I bought this a few years ago. I used it for a while. And then Bert decided she didn't want to use it anymore. And that we needed the room in the living room. And it found its way out here. And it used to face the window. And I used to use it about here, facing the window. And then Bert decided she was going to do all her woodworking, none of that, woodworking stuff, you know, all of these kind of things, in here. And she needed to set a table up and she needed to sort all this out. And of course, that had to go, had to be moved out of the way. She wanted to sell it. Um, I had this brainwave idea that I could put it there. And then I had another brainwave idea that I wanted to start doing stuff with the cars for the vehicle channel. And so I needed to put stuff for that there. And then we filled up the shed. So some of the stuff from the shed came out here. And it just got pushed into there. And I, I had the ride. I had the bike, the static bike thing. So I just gave up with that. But that is actually a really damn good workout. That is a damn good thrashing if you want to get going. I swear to Christ. I had some good results with that. And no matter how much I'm... Of all the things that I'm doing, that's the one I dislike the most. I still prefer it to running. I still prefer it to, you know, a, a, a treadmill. So I've decided to move that out, clean up this area. I've taken, there was a um, mitre saw on a stand there. Obviously, there's the, the table saw and everything here, but Bert isn't using that anymore, so I've, stuff, I've bunged stuff on top of it. Uh, so I decided to move the box around, I moved that out, and of course I can move this out a little bit, so I've got clearance with the bar. I've got the plugs for the fridge, which I could lift on top of the fridge and plug that in. Um, and I, I can do that. And I'm out of sight, I'm out of mind, I'm in my garage, everyone's a winner. Um, so yeah, like I said, I decided, and I was talking about this in the ones that didn't get loaded, I followed myself pretty much to just try to get get going physically because obviously I've got this to do one, at least once a week where I'm trying to do more than one upload a week I've got my car thing to do I've got to be focused I've got to be driven and I need to concentrate on more than work and I got a fantastic you know March, April were insanely fantastic okay I just I got such a head start on the year and the place I'm working at has taken on a hell of a lot of new drivers recently so agency work has dropped off unfortunately that's what happens so I thought well whilst I'm waiting for the new intake to start screwing up you know Oh, this isn't the kind of job for me. Oh, I don't like the way I'm being treated. Oh, these trucks are useless. Oh, well, blah, 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 blah. All the accidents. And, you know, the, you get a low, you get like 30 new drivers, at least 10 of them will leave. Yeah? Five of them will probably be kicked out because they're useless. And of 30 new drivers, 15 you'll keep. So whilst all that bollocks is going on, and of course we're in lockdown, as lockdown is being lifted, some of the people that went full-time to keep their income coming in well, they'll go back to their original jobs, wouldn't they? So whilst all that bollocks is going on, I've got enough money, you know, about, do the furlough stuff, I'm not working, I'm legally entitled to it, and see what I can, see what I can do, see whether I can motivate myself to actually start physically looking after me. Um... I've been walking successfully. I have used that bike a few times. As you can see, I've moved this out. And there's still dust down here and stuff, but the dust on the moving parts is all buggered off. Um, I just go from there. And that's one of the things I was talking about in the, in the stuff that didn't get uploaded. And then other stuff was... <laughs> I, I, I had this, this plan. The Jag was going in for Monday. The Jag was going in to get a quote. And so I was talking about, you know, the Jag going in, God knows how much this is going to be, yada, yada, yada. With the 
intention of talking about it this week. <laughs> well, of course, it went black screen. It just went blank. I was like, oh. <laughs> so all of that kind of setting up has just vaporised. You just buggered off. And so, other than just saying, well, look, you know, I, I had the quotes just shy of 1,600 quid. Um, that's it, really. The welding, it turns out, um, the, the garage that I use, and it's not the one that Dan works at. I had a falling out with his boss, and I'm not going back there again. Because his boss is a dick. Simple as. Um, <clears throat> I'd been going to that place for 12 years. And most everything I was getting done there no, no I'd pay I, I didn't expect mates rates or anything like that but every so often if there was a little job I'd be like is it alright you know I'll buy the parts can me and Dan fit them on a quiet day or you know when it's half day closing on a Saturday can you know I, I do that and it was always yeah not a problem mate with the with the people that used to manage it not a problem not a problem and anyway I bought the stuff to do the um, track rods and I, you know, I got got the right ones, got all the all the whistles and bells, and I turned up and I said, you know, is is there any chance myself and Dan can, you know, because I need to get new tyres, might as well get the tracking done, but the rods need replacing. So I've got the rods, can we replace them? And oh no, unless we buy the rods, mate, no, can't let you do it. No, no, mate, no, you, you got to buy them through us. Pardon? And he's like a new manager there, and he's like, "But I need four new tires, and I want the tracking all done. But you need the new rods. I got the new rods, you know. I, I've got, I've got the new, the new parts. Oh no, 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 can't, can't do that, mate. I mean, uh, when I'm not here, you know, you and Dan can do it uh, if Dan wants to take the risk. But you know, no, I can't do it. Got to buy it through us. And there was a little bit of an argument, <laughs> just a tiny one. And yeah, I won't go back there anymore." He can go get bent. So I started using um, a garage local to me, because where Dan works is in Chelmsford. I'm obviously the other side of Braintree. Um, so I've started using a garage local to me, and they don't do, they do patch welding, and little quick bits here and there, but they don't cut bits out and put other stuff in because it takes too long, and they could have worked on three or four other vehicles and, and made more money from it. Which I understand, it's a business thing, whatever. But just around the corner from them is a, is a welders. Uh, they're all professional stuff. They, well, obviously cars and anything you want welded, really. Um, that's what they do. And so they use this place around the corner. And the, the guy gets under there and he's welding cars all day, every day and whatever. And he's like, well, all you really need to do, I could replace the seals, the entire seals. But all you need to do, looking at how solid the back is, about halfway, cut them out and put new bits in, you know, the two front halves, both driver passenger side, halfway. Because everything back from it is actually really good. It's, it's been well covered. It's been, um, when they'd had some rot issues earlier on, years ago, when it had been first welded, whoever did it had stripped it back, done the welding properly, but then covered the entire seal front to back uh, in stuff like like that style thing. And what that had ultimately ended up doing is actually protecting the back half because he'd obviously stripped it down correctly, but the front half, where it was already rusty, where it was already a bit iffy anyway, obviously the rust had carried on. So the back's fine, it's just the front half's need changing. So that was cheaper. That was about 500 quid all in, I think, to, to get that done. So, yeah, I've got, I've got that quote. 1,557 quid. So call it 1,600 quid. Um, so I will have put just more into that car than it cost me to buy. And it will be sorted. I'm even having the gearbox oil done. I know I was a bit tentative about doing that. But it's kind of a Ford and Jag reckon that that box can do like 100,000 miles, 
obviously 10 years, 100,000 miles before you change it. Now, when that was made, it was sealed for life, which is a whole load of bollocks. But because it hasn't done 100,000 miles, it's only just gone over, well, it's just under 81,000. I'm thinking I might as well get the gearbox oil done. If it fails, I can get a reconditioned box for that car for about 250, 300 quid and have it fitted, whatever, and go from there. But if it's going to fail, I might as well know that it's knackered sooner rather than later. Uh, so I'm getting them to do that. And that's a, that's a bastard of a job because it was never designed to have the oil changed. It was designed as a forever unit, but you've got the little filler up up top. If you've removed the battery tray, you've got a little plastic, uh, plastic rubber stopper thing. And if you look underneath it, you've got a big kind of hexagonal bolt under there, you know, a head. And you undo that and that's where it comes out. But you've got to kind of rotate the gearbox and, and rotate and put some fresh in rotate around put some fresh you know it's like a cork comes out a time style thing you know um, so it's a real long pain in the arse job to do which is where the labour's being intensive because rocker gaskets spark plugs because if the rocker gaskets are get done I said look chuck spark plugs in there save me a bloody job later on little bit of frayed wiring you know those kind of jobs they don't cost a lot um, but the gearbox oil is, a, is an intensive intensive kind of hour labor you know hours of labor to do it so it's pain in the ass but yeah and the, th the thing is it doesn't take that long it's just that's what it's booked at i don't know it, it's like the book says right this will take six hours okay every garage will charge you six hours that's the book time even if they can do it in two they will charge you the book time because it's a business. They've got to make money. And that's the problem. <laughs> Not that they've got to make money, but it's the book times. It's like a decent mechanic who knows what they're doing. You know, the book says six hours, they'll have done it in under four. Yeah, but the book says six, so they're going to charge you six. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like using local garages. And I know, I know, I should do it myself, but... Like I said, there is method in my madness. It will become apparent when I go back to doing the Jag stuff on wearing bearings. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, I think that's enough for this upload. So I shall see you in the next one. I'll probably record that next, as long as that's not broken. <laughs> so cheers for watching. Like, subscribe, share about. Do all the bollocks that you usually do. I'll see you in the next one, which I'm about to record. Um, yeah, have fun. <laughs>